And don't get me wrong, I love New Horizons. I've already put 100 hours into the game and I feel like I've barely hit the tip of the iceberg in terms of the kind of things I want to do with my island and the plans I have for it and all that kind of thing. But there is a gaping flaw with this game that I think is also the big selling point of this game. So let's get right into that in this video. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alyssa and I have been playing and drawing a lot of Animal Crossing. <laughs> I have been playing Animal Crossing since, what, 2003 is when Population Growing came out. I got it for Christmas that year on GameCube. Me and my sister would fight every morning to be the first to dig up the fossils and go to the dump and see what cool items there were and explore the world of Animal Crossing together and meet all the villagers and find out all the cool things you could do in the game and collect all the furniture. And I have a lot of warm, fuzzy, rose-tinted memories of that game. And I've played every game in the series except for Wild World because I never owned a Nintendo DS. So with hundreds of combined hours of Animal Crossing experience preceding New Horizons, in addition to this new hundred hours I've already put into New Horizons, I think I have a pretty good understanding of the Animal Crossing franchise and what I like and don't like about it and what I like and dislike about this game compared to other games in the series. I love the deserted island start. I love how you only start with two villagers and an island covered in weeds that unless you're time traveling or have a very helpful friend you do not have full access to at the beginning of the game unless you have the ladder and the pole vault. You slowly unlock the island and you slowly unlock the ability to change it the way you see fit and it really feels like you get to develop this world from the ground up square by square in the case of doing the landscaping and waterways you really get to form each and everything the way you see it and even crafting the furniture is really satisfying and knowing hey I crafted that and put all that there and that took me so many hours to build and it looks great and I can't wait to have my friends over to see it it's really got a sense of satisfaction and building things from the ground up that the previous installments of the games didn't have. And I think a lot of that is in part to the new crafting mechanic and also how you start small and build from the ground up instead of being given all these shops and things from the outset of the game. That sense of exploration and personal accomplishment is something that's never really been done in an Animal Crossing game before. And I say this as somebody who felt very accomplished after dumping like 400 hours into my New Leaf Town and getting it just the way I wanted. <laughs> but in the past, players have had to kind of make their own way, whereas in this game, it's set up that way, that this is your world to develop as you see fit. And I think that's a really interesting and fun way to take the game. It makes it feel incredibly satisfying to play. And this is the first game in the series where I have not time traveled and I really have no desire to do so. I do share a lot of feelings with the Animal Crossing community when it comes to the shallowness of the villager dialogue. And while I do think the dialogue has always been kind of limited, it would be nice to see new things being said by the villagers. I have Celia in my uh, island, for example, and she, like every other sentence is some smell reminds her of she needs to call her dad. It's like that in one other line of dialogue just all day, all day. And I'm real friends with Renee now because I got a Nook Miles achievement for it, but her dialogue hasn't changed at all. So I don't know what developing this friendship means for dialogue, if they're supposed to say more stuff later or not. It would be nice to see, but I anticipate if enough people care about that kind of thing, maybe they'll add it in a patch, which is where I get to my biggest problem with this game. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, I love New Horizons. I've already put 100 hours into the game and I feel like I've barely hit the tip of the iceberg in terms of the kind of things I wanna do with my island and the plans I have for it and all that kind of thing. But there is a gaping flaw with this game that I think is also the big selling point of this game. There's been a lot of talk about Brewster being introduced into the game because everybody misses Brewster. If you're new to the video game series, um, he's a pigeon who makes coffee and in previous games, he was in the museum brewing coffee and KK would perform in his little coffee shop or in New Leaf. He had a standalone coffee shop that you could place in your town, which was super cool. And you could make coffee for all your villagers, which was a really fun and interesting way to interact with them. And you'd unlock unique furniture and everybody just loves Brewster. He's really cool. He's really cute. And his little building would be an addition to our islands that are otherwise pretty sparse in terms of shops. So there's rumors and uh, screenshots and video clips of different villagers in the game already talking about um, an art expansion to the museum or talking about gyroids or, you know, inferring that um, Brewster's gonna make a coffee shop or something like that, right? So it's more or less confirmed that the team plans to roll out some kind of patch or update involving Brewster. My point being, there's all these rumors and people getting excited about things like 
Brewster or things like maybe Harriet the Shampoodle coming back in some future way or you know all these beloved old characters coming back in updates and patches. That's the biggest problem with the game. It's lacking these basic things from the outset. And this was a big selling point of the game too. Like the game will have a longer lifespan because we'll be releasing patches and updates and events. And in theory, they can also change these events in years going forward and have different items for different holidays every year and maybe spice things up a little bit once the game has had a lifespan of a couple of years. However, I think the major downside to this is that they're just releasing a game that's got huge holes in it that people notice and care about. Longtime fans of the series care about these things like Brewster and wonder where's Rover and wonder where all these functionalities and things are coming back into the game series that were in previous titles that have no reason to not be here now. And they just released the game like that after such a long wait, after a long delay as well. Releasing a game with holes in it and then leaving it to updates is a very bad and very 2020 way to release a video game and I'm kind of sad to see Nintendo do it. I was hoping that the game would have more fully fleshed out shops you could unlock and my dream I'll get to in a minute it would unlock like a whole new area you could go to and all that kind of thing. So my biggest complaint with the game is that it's missing a huge chunk of features that were in other games that came in the New Leaf cartridge without an update, you know? New Leaf did have that big welcome amiibo update, but it had all the, you know, it had the coffee shop, it had the whole city where you could go do a dream address and all these things that should be in this game that fans want and fans need. There are huge key features from previous titles that should be in this game that are just not, and there's no reason for it. Like, where are the dream addresses? <laughs> And for those of you who never played New Leaf, you could go to the Dream Suite in New Leaf and um, register your town as a dream address. It would basically take a copy of your town at a certain time of day. You could pick what time of day if you wanted certain lighting or weather to be happening in your town for visitors to be a part of like rain or snow. And you could decorate your town however exactly the way you wanted it. And you could save that snapshot of your town and people could visit that whether you were online or offline or not they could just go to it and do a tour of your town it was amazing and i think we need that especially in a game where the online multiplayer is this bad there's no reason to be clicking on like four different menus to say that you want to go visit a friend's island sorry <laughs> it should just say it from the beginning there should not be that many menus to do one thing at the airport it's ridiculous but if you're gonna have that kind of convoluted menu system fine, just give me the dream address because I really want to tour other people's islands and short of them having a capture card and uploading some kind of video recorded tour onto YouTube for me to watch, there's no way for me to experience that and I would much rather go at my own pace and experience people's islands on my own time without having to worry about whether they're online or not or, you know, your functionality when somebody's visiting you is limited. There's only so many things you can do when you're having a visitor over, even if they're best friends, you can't decorate outside and stuff like that. So. In a game like this where the online multiplayer is so not good, we need dream addresses and it should have been part of the game at release. Like I'd be stoked to see it in an update, I'm hoping they'll put it in an update, but it should have been there from the beginning. There really isn't an excuse for that at all. And I think people also are getting their hopes too high for updates. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Maybe they will do some game changing update like my big wish I'll get to. That's at the end of my video. But you know, I think it'll be little incremental things like seasonal events, like Leaf comes to your town to give you special gardening things for like a week event. Or it'll be stuff like Bunny Day. I don't think it's gonna be some kind of earth shattering update the way that the Welcome Amiibo update was for New Leaf. In New Leaf, the Welcome Amiibo update they added an entire different form of currency to the game. It added like a little campground you could go visit to your town and it added a bunch of new functionality and it changed the way you could decorate your home with the same kind of like top down drag and drop um, decoration that we kind of have in New Horizons that was also from Happy Home Designer. Basically it added a bunch of new features and gave the game a huge breath of new life and it kind of helped uh, fill that gap between New Leaf and New Horizons for a lot of players. I don't think we're going to see a ton of updates on that level for New Horizons. I think people have their expectations way too high for what kinds of things we're going to see in updates. I think we're going to see a lot of, you know, seasonal items get released. Maybe a new character will come to visit your plaza more frequently during certain times of the year, things like that. But I really don't think we're going to have earth shattering DLC level updates to this game unless they make it like a standalone expansion pack, like a $20, $30 expansion pack, which 
you know, if it's got a ton of stuff in it, like my big wish that I'll talk about right now, I might even be willing to pay for it. But I think people should keep their expectations in check when it comes to these kind of game updates. I don't think they're gonna be everything we want and more. Now, what I would love to see, the only good thing about City Folk was the fact that there was a city, but the bad thing about City Folk was that there's nothing to do in the city, okay? <laughs> so hear me out. I would love to see where that pier is, you know, the long pier that you have. Some people speculate that maybe we'll get a Tortimer Island thing that goes there, I don't know. But I would love to see, my dream thing, you get a ferry and the ferry can be driven by like Porter the monkey and Captain. you know, they can take turns during different times of day and Rover sits on the boat and talks to you while you load the city. You go to a city and you get to like talk to Rover and maybe the conversation changes depending on the time of year or whatever. And when you get to the city, it's like, it's like New Donk City from Mario. It's not like some little piddly, you know, town square. Cause you can do that on your own island. Who needs that in a farmer's market and all that crap? We want a real bustling animal city. <laughs> Cause this is Animal Crossing. There's so few animals in it. You get what, 10 villagers, which is less than you've been able to put in previous games. And then you get Tom Nook and Isabel. There's hardly any animals in Animal Crossing. Where are the animals? <laughs> I want to see skyscrapers where you can see animals peeking out of the window and like little business suits and like, you know, little Raymond types and they're to be tapping on their computers and you can see things like this. You can see cool little brick apartment buildings and maybe go inside a couple of them and meet a couple villagers that you can invite to live on your island from there instead of just having them on the Nook Miles Island, you get exclusive city animals, you know? Shampoodle Harriet can make a comeback if you never played the previous game. She was a poodle that did your hair and she would do your hair according to answering a couple different questions. It wasn't like, okay, do you want purple hair or blue? It was like, what color makes you dreamy? You know, vague questions like that. And by answering certain questions, you'd get a random funky hairstyle and color. Bring her back, give her exclusive hair colors, give her like ombre, give her like crazy wacky hair, hair colors and hairstyles that you can't get anywhere else. Make her like the exclusive celebrity salon. This is like a ritzy city, right? And you get a full Gracie Grace boutique where you can get her fancy furniture and her clothes. She needs her own standalone boutique again that you can go visit in the city and she can sell some of LaBelle's exclusive uh, items there as well. Bring back Reese and Cyrus. Cyrus is like a big city construction worker now. He's got a little hat and he can be sitting on a beam eating lunch or whatever and underneath is like their new like um like apartment flipping or home flipping, serve furniture flipping, whatever. They can give you exclusive furniture. They can craft and customize specific furniture that you can't get on your home island. They have exclusive items you can buy at their like new and improved retail store. There's so much you could do with a city setting. You could have shops come and go. They're only open seasonally. Like for Halloween, they have like a spirit Halloween type thing come in and you can get exclusive costumes only in this one store that rotates seasonally. Like there's so much you could do with a true city expansion and it wouldn't have an aesthetic impact on your island so you could come and go as you please and people who want a more natural Animal Crossing setting can still keep that. You could essentially bring back all the characters that people have been wanting from all the previous games, bring them back, put new characters in there, rotate them in and out, try different things, have different stores open and close seasonally and if players hate them just close up shop forever and put a new one in and an update since you're going to be doing that anyways. You're going to be rolling out and changing anyway, put up the little construction sign and there's a new store opening in October and the old one's going away forever, buy your limited time items now. I think people would really get into that and it would add a sense of intrigue to the city. It would want to make you drive out to go there and deal with the ferry boat ride. And you know, I think it would be tons of fun and I think a city would be a good place. Maybe if you set up a city park, you could bring back the mini games that we got on the Tortimer Island. Um, people have been talking about Tortimer Island because they had mini games and all that. But since this is an island themed, you know, deserted island getaway, already tropical game. It doesn't make sense to have a separate island to go to. It doesn't really make any sense to me. So I think having like a big open city park playground area and you can have friends over there and like play mini games, I think that would be awesome. Like you and your friends can all ride the ferry together and go play games. There's so much you could do with like a big city expansion. So that is my pie in the sky expansion update dream that will probably never come true. <laughs> 
but that's what I would love to see. So here's the part where I ask you guys, what's your pie in the sky dream update to this game that you would love to see if there was no limits whatsoever and you could make anything you wanted? And also, do you agree with me that the biggest problem with this game is the fact that it relies so heavily on updates? And where do you think this game will be in five, six, seven years? Will they still be updating it or will they do one final update that keeps the holidays intact on a perpetual loop? Like, where is this game going in the future? Because I know it's still 2020 and this year has felt like 20 years already, but eventually this game will reach the end of its lifespan. And what do you think that will look like in terms of a game that relies on being updated? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks again for a thousand subs. I'm really grateful. I'm shocked more than a hundred people would want to watch this channel, let alone a thousand. It really means a lot to me. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe because I upload new videos every single week. Despite everything that's going on, I hope the rest of your day is fantastic. Peace out, guys.